Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is having a wonderful uh, spring weekend, getting some sun, getting some good food, some quality family, friends, and loved ones time. And hopefully your trading is uh, coming along like everybody else uh, in this world. It's all day-to-day, -day, uh, week to week. And again, we learn uh, from our mistakes and hopefully uh, cut out all the things that are continuing to handicap our development. If you are brand new to the channel, uh, thank you. Welcome aboard. Uh, we invite you to like, uh, subscribe, share all that good stuff uh, that keeps the channel healthy uh, so we can continue to bring you uh, these non-biased updates. So let's talk about it, right? Very exhausting week for investors and traders, right? Uh, a lot of information to digest. Um, PAG W, uh, again, another string of regional banks uh, basically shutting off the lights, right? Uh, midweek, they came out. FDIC was basically taking control. Uh, Friday, even, they, they cut their dividend. Um, you know, a lot of mess. You had uh, FRC, PAG W, SIVB, it's, it's countless. I think it's like number seven. Uh, the seven bank failures, JP Morgan swooped in, uh, bought, you know, bought the FRC assets, uh, very, very cheap, great, great return, uh, for their shareholders, but you can see the continuous domino effect, uh, from these regional banks, uh, the latest potential casualty, uh, was that WAL, if you guys remember, uh, WAL, there was a rumor that they were, came, they came out with the same announcement that Pag W basically did in the middle of the week. And that basically said was, well, we're looking for a buyer. We're looking for any strategic alternatives. And that proved to, at least from the company's point of view, that chatter uh, proved to be false. So there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of it exhausted, frustrated, uh, beaten up investors uh, on these banks, traders who are trying to short them, uh, trying to buy their dips. Uh, they're getting uh, into a 12-round event with Mike Tyson. So a lot of stuff uh, being thrown at the investors, especially uh, in the banking space. We also saw a two-day uh, Fed meeting, uh, you know, again, exhausting, right? It's not, they, they don't just rip off the Band-Aid by a couple of comments. They have to extend it now. So you had a two-day meeting. At the end of the day, uh, you had 25 basis point uh, rise in rates. Not big of a surprise. We did get some, a little bit of language uh, from the Fed say, hey, look, we're monitoring inflation. Our target goal is to get to 2% inflation. And we'll take it, you know, we'll take it case by case, uh, month by month, you know, th that, you know, again, that wasn't really great or good news uh, for the bulls. And the biggest story, again, continues to be uh, the leaders in the technology space. Again, we're, we're starting, you know, we're about a week, two weeks away from uh, getting rid of the major uh, technology names uh, into earnings. Pretty much all of them are reported. We still have uh, NVIDIA that is on deck going into, I think, in either this week or next week, I have to double check. Uh, but the scoreboard has been okay, right? That's the best way of saying. The leaders have held their ground. Uh, you had Microsoft, the Meta, you know, Tesla did disappoint. You had Netflix did disappoint, but they're actually recovering. Uh, Amazon, initial move, uh, really good move into earnings. And then, you know, the CEO uh, spilled some sour milk on everybody. But overall, the market has been, you know, really good digesting technology names. And Apple was the latest one who came out with, you know, you can make an argument a decent quarter. Uh, uh, iPhone sales have continued to be uh, very, very impressive uh, considering how crappy the overall landscape is uh, on the economy. People still continue uh, to buy these $1,300, $1,400, $1,500 phones. Uh, but the, the most important part was, and this is kind of where um, I always play devil's advocate and I turn, you know, take off the rose colored glasses. Uh, you know, haven't we seen this movie before, right? And, and this is where a lot of bull bear frustration uh, is going to happen uh, going into Monday session. And let me let me kind of explain. So we had this big run, right? As we can see, we've had this big run. We've been enjoying overall in 2023 uh, a pretty huge run. We entered uh, we entered Friday's 
session uh, up 18% on the QQQs. Um, you know, while the Dow went red uh, on, on Thursday night. Um, so it wasn't a question of was there overall broader strength. Of course there is. I mean, again, 18% rise going into Friday's session is pretty, uh, pretty impressive. But the continued debate, and I get it, right? The continued debate was, well, isn't it like four or five stocks that are holding up the NASDAQ? Okay, I could, I could roll with that. I, I can make a case uh, both bull and bear. Uh, for that, you know, for that argument, okay, that's cool. At the end of the day, the scoreboard is the scoreboard. Wherever we close, uh, that's fair value. But the the one thing that that it's not a slam dunk anymore is the anticipation and the for you know for conclusion that we are going to follow through. So if you, you if you can kind of indulge me here, right? So you know this was Microsoft's numbers. If you guys remember, the market broke down right when Microsoft came out earnings, and the whole question was. Or was the market going to be saved by Microsoft? The next day, right? The next day, we had a really, a really aggressive sell-off, and we closed at the bottom of the range, right? That wasn't a great thing. And what happened after, if you assume the market was going to go to hell in a handbasket, the market started exploding back again, right? Exploding back again. And then Meta came out with earnings. And then the question was, well, now did Meta, right, is going to save the market? And what happened three days later, the market aggressively again, sold off. So every single time for the last sequence going all the way back to uh, March the 4th, right? You have a scenario here of, well, we're closing at the top of the range and then we're failing. We're closing at the bottom of the range and then we're rallying. We closed at the top of the range. We got a three-day sell-off only for uh, events to happen. And again, granted, uh, Friday you had uh, announcement coming from uh, the FDIC. At least it was chatter that banks with less than $10 billion uh, in deposits were going to be uh, exempt from deposits insurance. Obviously, you had a big uh, debt cat bounce uh, coming from all the banks. Uh, you also had uh, Apple, again, saving the day for technology, uh, came out and they rallied as well. Shopify rallied as well. Pretty much everything. We'll get to individual pivots in a second. And, you know, we basically engulfed uh, four days worth of selling in one day. You also had um, you also had the jobs numbers, again, very, very tight uh, labor market continues to kind of uh, surface on the horizon. So you had a lot of data points. You had a lot of things to kind of uh, think about and overthink about. But again, if this was years ago and we closed, especially on a Friday at the top of the range, I would turn around and go, I'm all in over the weekend, right? It's just, it hasn't been that way, right? That's the thing. It hasn't been that way. And it's very, very you know, naive to turn around. You know, right now it's Sunday morning at 9.30 in the morning on the East Coast. It's very, very easy to turn around and say, well, this time is different. We're definitely going to follow through on Monday. Hey, my whole game plan is on the long side, right? So I'm hoping that's the case. But it's, it's, been, it's been really tough for the Bulls or the Bears to kind of uh, get traction as soon as they close at the top of the range or they close at the bottom of the range. Is it going to be different this time around on Monday? We will see, right? We will see. We will have this, uh, you know, we will have this conversation Monday night on the video. But it, again, to assume that we are going to follow through, considering we have all this dev uh, evidence of closing the top of the range failing, closing at the top of the range failing, closing at the bottom range rallying, closing at the bottom range rallying, right? That's why a lot of investors, a lot of traders uh, have been, you know, pulling out the hairs, especially uh, in the overnight market, then they can't understand how come... Uh, the momentum is not playing out in that direction after a clear close into strength and weakness. So again, uh, I'm going into uh, this week uh, definitely, definitely prepared to the upside, right? I mean, the, the, the way we closed and the way a lot of these stocks close, it looks great on the surface, but boy, oh boy, we've been here before. It's like being a spouse. Uh, it's, it's like being a, a spouse that's been cheated on three separate times and the fourth time around your spouse comes to you. I promise that was the last time that it will be different, right? We don't know. We don't know that for sure. So obviously we want to be prepared for everything uh, going into uh, Monday's session. But again, on the surface, we did close. This is the highest close in this whole formation uh, that started all the way back to uh, March the 3rd. So again, we'll see. We want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. But boy, oh boy, is it so easily, you know, easily conceivable. You know, we have some sort of news coming out with another bank. Uh, in the next few hours, Monday morning, Monday pre-market, and the next thing you know, everything I'm saying, you know, we're look now we're looking at stocks crumbling back uh, to the bottom of the range. That's been kind of the mantra of the market uh, for the last uh, month or so. So again, we will see 
uh, if things are going to be different. But again, on the surface, uh, things look great, right? You, you know, Tesla finally uh, came out of the shadow. We've been talking about this, and I butchered Tesla on Friday, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, you know, Tesla coming in, uh, coming out of a tight, tight channel here. This is the highest close in this whole formation. Watch Tesla for this week, guys. Okay, keep an eye on this thing. If it confirmed the 20-day moving average and the market follows through, we could get a move to 75, 76. I will not butcher this one. Um, I will not butcher this one. And, and I kind of, I, I want to share my thoughts with all you guys uh, in the webinar, I think, uh, where I, I kind of let this thing go uh, prematurely on Friday. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that Monday morning strategy. But if Tesla can get above this 20-day moving average, I do think there's a potential this thing squeezes back to uh, 76 uh, 77. Uh, Microsoft continues to be an absolute monster. Again, you had four days worth of selling. This thing looked like it was about to fall off a cliff, and then Friday just absolutely exploded. Uh, NVIDIA woke up after, you know, three aggressive days, pulled back into the 20-day moving average, pretty much engulfed three days worth of action. This thing's maybe a day away uh, from waking up. Uh, Shopify, uh, fantastic, fantastic quarter. Uh, yesterday, follow through, uh, went absolutely ballistic. Even Coinbase, right? Even Coinbase has been, you know, dead in the, you know, dead to rights for what? Since, uh, since 418, you talk about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You talk about three weeks. Three weeks, they had a really, really good, a good well, deemed good quarter, uh, and the stock rallied again. So you, you have a lot of, uh, a lot of feel good moments from Friday sessions trying to spill over. Uh, into uh, Monday, we'll see what happens. You know, can Amazon uh, rebound? It's getting very, very tight. Maybe it gets above uh, this channel, starts going back uh, to earnings highs. Uh, Meta has been, you know, has been resting, uh, resting for about what four, you know, about two weeks now. Uh, after its earnings, it held a ten-day moving average. Is this thing going to finally wake up and reclaim uh, the five-day moving average again? At, at the stage is set for the bulls to succeed, right? We close at the top of the range. Uh, we're engulfing. At least for the most part, uh, bad news on the banks. You could tell because this is the highest close in this whole formation. So everything is set up perfectly for the bulls to rally. You know, can they do it, right? Can they live with pros prosperity? As I said uh, many times in the past, can they, uh, you know, now that they found love, can they finally l learn to, you know, to, to live with love? We'll see. No, we'll see what happens. But again, I wouldn't be shocked uh, either way if uh, we started going down. But again, my game plan for Monday uh, is definitely, if we have a weaker open, I'm not talking about down 300, but if we have a weaker open, you know, on the NASDAQ, down 40, 50, 60 handles, uh, anything that rallied, uh, anything that rallied strong, I'm looking to buy them into dips, into rising 60 minute support, red to green or above the previous channel. And there's no better, you know, there's no better example of what I want to accomplish on Monday uh, is a name like Apple. Apple broke out. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Huge area. It broke out above uh, the high from three days ago, took out opening range highs, confirmed all that good stuff. And here's a perfect example. If we get a slight open, right? A slight red open on uh, Monday and the stock is down 60 cents, 70 cents, a dollar, whatever, you know, it, again, here's a perfect, you know, perfect example of a stock that could go into 60 minutes support, right? And for you guys to trade off the 60 minute channels. Here's a 60 minute support, right? It goes into 60 minute support. It holds a 60 minute support. Eager shorts, late shorts get trapped. It goes red to green and starts attacking uh, Friday's channel. That would be ideal. And there's a lot of names like that that could fit uh, that bill as well. So we're set up, right? We're set up technically. Uh, is it going to follow through? I mean, on paper it should, right? But again, with this market, we've been disappointed now uh, for about a month and a half of continuation moves. As they say all the time, maybe this time it's different. So we'll see. So let's talk about uh, Friday's pivots. At, as you can imagine, uh, everything went, you know, ballistic, right? I mean, the market went nuts. The queues went nuts. Everything went nuts. Uh, you had the dead cap balances in the banks. You had uh, Apple's earnings uh, pu pushing everything up. You had, uh, you know, you had Microsoft, NVIDIA. You had everything under the sun went absolutely nuts. As you can imagine, it finally, it, it finally felt good. If you, if you guys remember... Uh, you know, the updates from like Tuesday and th uh, Wednesday and Thursday, um, the market did nothing. It was just contracting. It was just sitting there in a range. And it's, it's so difficult, guys, especially for new traders to accept it, the fact that sometimes the market, when there's so many, you know, so many uh, external factors, it's going to sit in a range. If you have the discipline, this is such a crucial part of trading. 
But if you have the discipline, okay, the absolute discipline to avoid those days and say, look, there's nothing going on. You know, Tesla's trading at a 50 cent range. Amazon's trading 40 cent range. Meta's trading this 80 cent rate. There's nothing going on. If you can leave those days alone, you have self-control. What's going to happen in time, you're going to realize this hopefully sooner than later, but what's going to happen in time is those days are going to be much easier to let go. So all that FOMO that you have, that you have to trade because the market's open, that's going to go away. And then all of a sudden that's replaced with something that I call JOMO. It's the joy of missing out instead of the fear of missing out. And you understand it's the joy of missing out because you understand that the days that the market's contracting, the market is resting. So the market rests, you rest. So when the market expands, that's when you expand with it. And after two days of, you know, just, just eye gouging action, the market finally expanded again on all those notes that we had a couple of minutes ago with Apple and the banks and all that good stuff. We had a really aggressive uh, broad market rally. So let's talk about it, right? So here is the pivot. We've been talking about Tesla tight uh, for, you know, for about a week or so, uh, 166 to the upside, uh, 158.80 to the downside. You know, here is Tesla finally got above this channel. Again, I'll share my thoughts on Monday. It's kind of been bothering me how we kind of messed this up, but uh, I'll share my thoughts on Monday, but finally got above you know, I, I really messed up this trade. I had, I had a cup of coffee profit instead of really, uh, whatever, we'll talk about it on Monday. Uh, anyway, it got above this whole channel here. Uh, finally went to the next supply. Uh, watch Tesla again for uh, resumption on Monday or Monday or Tuesday. If we could get above this 20-day supply, I think it, there's a shot. It starts stretching and filling in this gap uh, all the way up to uh, 176, which is the low uh, from 410. So for all you guys who caught it, uh, better than I did a great job is there. Uh, Mara never got to, well, excuse me, got to 1065, never triggered. Uh, Amazon, I still like this thing, never triggered. Here's my big trade of the day. Um, still have a runner overnight. Uh, 171 uh, daily and 171.47 uh, after hours highs. And that turned out to be the pre-market highs as well. Needs to confirm for more upside. And Apple, Apple went nuts. Uh, really, really great move. Uh, Apple went absolutely nuts. Uh, so here was, uh, so here was the whole 41 range. Here's the 41 range. Here's the 71, uh, 71, uh, 47, which was the after hours high. It took out that after, uh, after hours high and just went absolutely ballistic, went all the way up to, uh, 74. Great move. Just absolutely great move on, uh, Apple on uh, Nvidia again, went nuts as well. You can, you can see, you can see the theme of the day. Nvidia 279 upside, uh, 272 downside. Again, you always have to be prepared from both sides of the market. Uh, NVIDIA finally got above this five-day moving average, was a 79, and just absolutely exploded. It went to uh, 8750s. Uh, this thing starts confirming uh, Monday or Tuesday. If it starts confirming this upper Bollinger Band, we should see uh, back to the high of May 1st. We'll see, right? We'll see. The a great move on NVIDIA. Even Coinbase exploded. 54, uh, 30 needs to build. Here is Coin. If you look at the 60-minute view, why 54, 30 was important. It's this whole channel here, right? It's this whole channel here. 54, 54, 11 was the high here. 54, 27, 54, 22. So it got above the 54, 30, just went out of its mind uh, all the way up to, uh, to, to 58. Just an absolute monster move on coin. Uh, shop went ballistic as well. Shop 58, 75, rejected three times. That's on the 60 minute view, guys. Again, you, you will never understand those levels if you're not trading on the 60 minute view. But so here's... Uh, the 60 minute view right here's we got we'll reject the once twice three times right once it got above and this is kind of what we talk about the sneaky pivot right a lot of you guys have always asked me uh, if before you guys are not in the webinar uh, a lot of guys people always ask me what's the sneaky pivot what's the sneaky pivot it's not the top high it's not the low it's a channel that's forming in the 60 minute base and you have usually have two or three reference points and here is a perfect example of it got rejected several times uh, off the same level, once it finally came through, just absolutely exploded. Uh, I know a lot of you guys uh, caught uh, Shopify as well. Uh, Microsoft went nuts towards the end of the day. Uh, 30920 needs to build, and Mr. Softy went crazy. Mr. Softy took out this whole channel uh, and went to uh, 12. I still like this thing for higher prices uh, for this week as well. And I believe that's it, right? I believe that's it. So, uh, very good. Uh, aggressive, uh, aggressive action on Friday. There was also, you know, names like uh, ONON that finally woke up, uh, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, the stuff like that is kind of irrelevant. But uh, all in all, uh, market held very, very well. Big broad market rally. A lot of you guys 
Uh, I, I can think I can speak for everybody who trades technology. I think we we got a we got like a 400 pound uh, uh, rhinoceros off our shoulders. Just finally got some expansion uh, towards the end of the week. We definitely appreciate it. So the question is, are we going to follow through? Now that we have love, what are we going to do with it? Right, guys. God bless. Have an amazing, amazing Sunday. And with God's help, I will see you all tomorrow. Take.